How you guys doing? Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, my name is Micah David, obviously by the YouTube channel name, and I am a filmmaker and photographer that does all that stuff. So as some of you guys know already, I was recently on a project. On that project, I was helping a friend film something. He just wanted to do like a short film slash commercial. And this project was just to promote Raycon. It's like Raycon Everyday Pro headphones, I believe. If you guys ever have an opportunity to help on set with some friends or anybody else with the team, hugely highly recommend it. So in this video, I wanted to go through the scenes and try to show you how we set it up and just kind of run you down the setup of it, uh, how we formed each different shot. So this is the first shot. So for this one, we kind of wanted to include some insert shots. So the goal of the beginning of the short film was just to show some routine so we can have more of like an impact when the package shows up. So we have more interest on the package. Like he had a routine going, this isn't a part of his routine clearly by his expression. So yeah, that's what we just wanted to go for. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out here, and this is one of the main things that Makai really wanted. I feel like this was his objective during this film, which was to add texture wherever he can and that would be a good case when it comes to insert shots for those of you who don't know insert shots are when you're focusing on an object right when the framing of your camera and the composition is just to be focused on an object so clearly our subject or subjects would be this guy right here and this guy right here subjects and so one of the main things I wanted to point out is this right here we can see it mainly in this corner and this is the texture we have in there. Pretty much for that, we just added some leaves in front of a light. And I believe that light was a Nan light 150. Uh, no diffusion at all. The only thing we had was the uh, the dish. Uh, I can never remember the name. We only had the dish that can kind of focus to light. So we had that, we had leaves in front of it so we can get that texture on the wall. As you can see, we see it right here, right here, right there. That's all you can see, texture you can see like some light peeking between each leaf and everything. But something at least I really wanted to add, and I'm not sure if it got made in the cut or not, but I wanted to add like a little, a little light wand coming from this direction to kind of like, you know, put a little accent lighting. And actually, I think you can see it right here. That orange light right there, that's where you can see it. And also kind of back here. So we just kind of had that accent lighting come down and hit our subjects in this case. Right here, we can see like this prop. Also this guy right here, this little some type of vase thingy for some like wheat. I wanted to make sure I had those as my props just so we can add something in the background, right? We wanna make it look natural, so we added these guys in the back. Okay, so from that, I hope you get a good idea of what we're trying to go for in this shot. Cool. Right, one more for the road. Okay, so for our second shot, this one was most memorable because it was also the most kind of frustrating to kind of figure out how we're gonna light stuff. Where the microwave was, it was kind of in a corner. So to get some lighting on him, at least some front lighting, whatever, was kind of a bit complicated in terms of space and you know lights we're gonna use and how we're gonna use the lights in terms of diffusion and everything, because we just didn't want hard light on him. But the main thing we wanted is Mills opening up the microwave, putting something in to accentuate the routine, his morning routine. The first thing that we wanted to do, we really wanted to expose for the background. Exposing for the outside would mean, you know, taking the outside for priority. You know, looking through the window, looking through the door, putting on the ND filter, turning the ND up. If you can see out there, we are exposing for outside and that's what we wanted. Now we just need to focus on compensating for exposing outside. Front lighting him, we wanted to get to that later. So we focus on the other things. Uh, more things like, you know, propping where stuff are supposed to go. We're using the things inside the house. For example, this was Makai's sister's house and she has a lot of plants everywhere. And we really wanted to make sure we included those plants everywhere we could because greenery is beautiful. I love greenery. As you can see right here, we have a whole lot of greenery. We want to make sure we get that in there. You can see some greenery on the table. We kind of made sure to clean off the table, make it look 
kind of clean, but not too clean because we want to also make it realistic, but also presentable. And I also believe there was a light shining from right here, from that way, coming all over him and kind of getting like a rim light for him to kind of separate him. That was the Nan light. And we had the dish on there once again to kind of focus that light, but no diffusion on that. You know, we don't need diffusion for stuff like rim lights or anything too much because the rim light is just like a small little light to separate us, right? We don't need to worry about softening up the shadows or the edges or anything. Now that we had all that, we need to focus on lighting him. How are we gonna light him? We have everything else set up. We have the composition set up. It was very kind of frustrating, right? Because we wanted to add so many different things, but the camera was like right up against the cabinets. If we can't put the light there, if we can't put the light kind of right in front of him with the fusion and stuff, what the next thing we do is we decide to bounce it. I'm not sure how I can really explain it, but we had a GVM Pro 500. We had that in like the corner. It was by color two. Uh, I just put a B for bi color. So we had that GVM Pro 500. We had that bouncing off of the corner where the wall meets the ceiling. And so for those of you who don't know, if you can't have diffusion, try bouncing it off. I mean, I guess like right here on his face, we see like a little hot spot making a tad bit sourcey. But at the end of the day, we need to get the shot. We, we want to make sure that we can see our subject. That was the best that we can really do. Uh, it was the best looking. Also, I want to point out that inside the fridge, we had that same light wand. So by the time he opens the microwave, me or Makai was somewhere in the back, like right back here or something. So right when he opened it, light comes on. So it was just a nice little feature. I think we ended up taking it out because you can actually see the light wand on the reflection of the microwave. If you guys can learn anything from that, emphasize it a little bit more. Emphasize the fact that he's opening up a microwave. A light usually comes on when you open up a microwave. Try to figure out ways that you can emphasize some things or add a little touch to something. Of course, not too much because too much of little things could be cluttering. Brother. <laughs> okay, so this one was a top down shot and we wanted to get a close up kind of, just really kind of highlight the details and the form factor of the build of the Raycon Everyday Headphone Pros, I believe it's called, once again, very long name. So this was a part where he was opening up the package, checking it out, looking around. Mills had a Godox M300 by, by color, whatever. So as you can see, like right here, right? We get some shades and everything like right there. Another example of creating texture, really good opportunity there. We took advantage of that. There's two ways of adding texture. You can either one, like we do with the leaves, put some leaves in front of a light, easily project some texture. With this one, we actually got the Godox light and put it outside. So if you remember in the last frame, that we were looking on, that sliding door right there, that's actually right here, right? So we put the Godox light outside of that sliding door. That's another way how we created texture in this shot. The second way to do that is pretty much the same thing, but in a different way, kind of. If you guys know, there's things called projector mounts that you can put actually on the camera, and it comes with a book that you can just flip through different patterns. You put that pattern inside of the projector mount, and bam, you get a pattern texture. And now with top down shots, one of the most important factors that you'll probably see everywhere is we want to make sure we have props in the corners wherever we can. That's one thing you definitely want to take note of whenever you're doing a top down shot, you want to have other things than the main thing you're focusing on in your shot on the table. So let's say we're looking at a hammer right? We want to have some nails on the table, maybe even some screws, a toolbox, maybe another tool like a screwdriver. We just want to have other things on the table that kind of correlates with the main subject that we're dealing with. You, I mean, you could definitely do that. You can do anything you want in filmmaking. It may just be considered creative. It just depends on what type of theme and the pacing of your whole film. You just got to make it work. You just got to make it match. Anyways, another prop we had is this uh, plant right there. And we have this stuff. Of course, this was after he opened up the package. That stuff still adds on to having props on the table. So now we want to talk about the main light that was kind of lighting all of this. That light is coming from this way and that light would be the GVM 500 Pro. Okay, now this shot was probably the one of the most favorite shots of the whole thing. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed just how it looked and kind of how it 
came together and everything. The mixture of the color temperatures of the lights, very nice, very nice contrast. So we have our subject, he's just walking in. And so he's coming to sit down right there. Right. So of course we have to put an emphasis not on where he's walking from necessarily, but where he is walking to because you know, he's walking into position. So we want to focus on that end position when it comes to like lighting and everything. We had this light stand. We had a tube light right back there. So that's kind of like getting on him a tad bit there. And that was just kind of to illuminate him. Like, hey, there he is, little outline. Now let's get to the main thing here that everybody's probably looking at is this huge, nice pattern right there on the windows. We got some right there and some right there as well. This was the own work of the Godox light. Godox uh, M300. Can't remember what the uh, color temperature was on. I'll put it up here on the camera. That Godox M300 was actually outside in a very small crevice in Makai's backyard. Now when the shoot day started, we had a set designer come in and add in these lights right here to set out like a warmer color and also these uh, camera wallpaper frames up top, a real perfect addition to it. I think Bills actually took it home for his studio, but it was just real perfect. Like I said, props could really matter because imagine if we're in here and we didn't have any of this, these books down here, we didn't have that down there, none of this, none of that, we didn't have any of that. It would look kind of boring. It will look kind of like, dude, who actually has their space that clean? Like this isn't realistic. So yeah, Mills had a combo stand that we set up. If we were to like zoom out from this frame, right? And we're actually there in person, there was a counter all right here. And so we had to use the C-stand, put it behind the counter, bring it all the way up and stretch it all the way. So it's like, like right here in the corner, right? somewhere up there. What we did with that combo stand is we actually put on one of my lights, the GVM PADS 2s We had that light on the combo stand because that light is really small. Uh, so that was kind of shining on him, giving him more so of a key light. So when he sits down, he's illuminated and not just by that moonlight that we had. So when he sits down, it'll look like that moonlight is illuminating him, but it's really not. That's the whole illusion of filmmaking cinematography right there. I'm pretty sure we also had another tube light kind of in the corner too, kind of illuminating him from that side as well. Um, so we kind of had, it was a lot going on, but at the same time, not too much. Pretty simple uh, setup here. Okay, so that was the last shot, uh, martini shot of the shoot day and martini shot of this. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informational for you. I felt like I included a lot of information for you guys to take home. Now you guys know that I'm a real cinematographer. I'm not just fronting with you guys. Um, I really wanted to work on that. I realized that I was pushing out content mainly about photography and also the content as well wasn't directly educational, right? Some of my videos, most of my videos will be indirectly educational. So I want to make this video and um, to make sure you guys know a little something, get a little insight of what I know. If you guys have any input to be like, oh, on this shot, I would have added this or that so we can get more of this look please comment that. I would love to see it. And I would love to talk with you guys in the comment section. Um, but yeah, that'll be for it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye bye. And so for this shot right here that we have right here, we actually have a book light set up right behind here thing. And we also have here, I'll just move the camera right here. We have some, this is our, it's actually a moving blanket, but it's just to give us um, some more contrast on our face. And we have the blue light back there.